Welcome back. What do we have today? Let's have a look in the box and see what we can find. It is a Hewlett Packard 3050 print scan copy multifunctioning. Oh dear, it seems to have broken. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it, we're probably not going to get a huge amount out of this. It's going to be a bunch of printed circuit boards. There's going to be some motors, but they're going to be driven by stepper drivers, meaning we probably can't get them to work without using an Arduino and a stepper driver. But we're going to have a look anyway. First of all, Hewlett Packard. People think it's a modern company. It was actually set up in about 1939 in Palo Alto by Bill and Dave, Hewlett and Packard. Most famous for their printers and all-in-one scan fax copy whatever but even better known for their nefarious ink tactics this 57 number 56 black cartridge and printhead is about 42 dollars and does not give you very much in the way of ink and for that we all take it out on this somewhat functioning hewlett packard 3050 print scan copy. Let's see if it, we can make it work. Black copy. Ooh, it moves. So we're going to take it apart first. Not only do um, is Hewlett Packard famous for its funky tactics on ink, their screws that hold this thing together. I tried one earlier to take it apart and The number 10 Torx is kind of too small and the number 15 Torx is too big. So it's, it's almost like they've got their own proprietorial screws to even more annoy you and stop you taking things apart. We're going to do it with the number 10 though. It's kind of painful. And we seem like we're missing a couple of screws. So, I suspect under here. Why looky? A screw. And a screw. And I think we're still, we still have functionality. Oh yeah, we do. Let's try a black copy. The thing about Hewlett Packard. Off you go, baby. About their ink system is that. Where did that inkjet go? Here we go. This has got a print head on it. Unlike some of the Canon and Epson um, printers, and some, to be fair, some Hewlett Packard printers, where the printer, the print head, the expensive part is actually in here, uh, on these models, on the inkjet models, uh, the print cartridge comes with the print head, which is nice when the print head goes bad because you're using a new print head every single time you buy a cartridge. But that's why this is $41. This, uh, this machine doesn't actually take these. It takes these, the 61 XL. This is $45, even from Walmart. Actually, from Walmart, it's $45.89. From Hewlett Packard, it's 45.99. So you can save yourself 11 cents or 10 cents by going to Walmart. But as a result, uh, we do not use these anymore. Um, we I only use inkjets where the printhead is elsewhere in here, and you can fill them up using good old syringe and a bottle of ink, which this I believe cost me six dollars. This was a couple of bucks from the surplus store. Um, you, can, you, you don't want to use smaller syringes than this. This is about enough for a, my Epson printer. But that's the way to do it. Let's get into this. It is always worth having a magnet nearby so you can pull the screws out because sometimes they just won't come out. So now we should have access to the guts of this baby. And she's a beaut. I'm going to power her down 
Um, this also comes with a power supply. Rather than plugging it in directly, this has a 30 volt, 0.3 of an amp, so it runs on about 30, 30 watts. So this is a 30 watt power supply. I don't have anything else that runs on 30 watts, on 30 amps, 30 amps, 30 volts. Um, so it's pretty much useless. This will, this will probably go in the bin with um, with the rest of this. But we'll disconnect it because we are going to get our fingers in there. And 30 volts is 30 volts. Really nothing salvageable there. I'm going to remove the ribbon connector, which you can do just by pulling straight up. There we go. Um, we'll take that apart in a minute. Here we have the carriage drive with the ink jets in it. You can access those from below. So this is nearly a hundred dollars worth of ink jets. As you can see, these are knockoffs. These are what's known as remanufactured, probably illegally. I'd probably get caught if I took these over state lines. And they, these, these still cost $28 a piece. But now we have a nice little... I, unfortunately, it's not a linear actuator. If it was a driven linear actuator, we would have a lot more fun with this. Let's take this baby apart. Still using the same funny shape connectors. I did try Allen wrenches on these, both metric and imperial. No joy there. Interestingly, the um, inkjet, the process of inkjet is kind of a fascinating one. Started quite a long time ago, um, I think 1970s. So this is the print head and it works in one of two ways. I'm not sure which way this one works. It's either a thermal head in which electricity is applied to the ink, which expands, which pushes little jets of ink out as the head moves backwards and forwards across the paper and the paper moves forwards underneath it. Or it's a piezoelectric um, ejection system. Um, piezo means it's a small crystal which if you apply electricity to it, it moves, giving you the oomph to push the, the ink out of these tiny little holes. Conversely, if you squeeze a piezoelectric crystal, it gives out electricity. So the electric um, zappers for uh, uh, barbecue lighters, that's a piezoelectric crystal in there. You squeeze it together, it all gets released at once and goes dink, and a little flash of electricity comes out at the end and supposedly lights your barbecue lighter. I do not have good luck with those. They never seem to work. They work once out of the packet and then that's it. So one or two methods, either thermo or piezoelectric, to shoot little jets of ink um, out onto the paper. Fascinating stuff. So the motor that doesn't like being pushed, the motor that's driving this back and forth is most likely to be a stepper motor. As I mentioned earlier, it means it's not going to be much use to us because... We're not so fancy right here and right now, anyway, to be able to use a driver. But if you have an Arduino, you can, for about 10 bucks, get a stepper driver off Amazon. Come on, give it up. I haven't actually busted anything yet, which is quite surprising. Okay, the lid got broken, but these ribbon connectors just pull straight out and go straight back in again. When they're very long, you have to be very careful not to get them misaligned if, for, a, for a touch screen, for example. Probably nothing really here of any use to us. Some capacitors, some yeah, transformers of some kind. Um, yeah. What do we have? That's connected. A bunch of gears in the bottom. That bit is kind of in the way. I say kind of in the way. I mean very much in the way.
dodgy light. There we go, that's a bit, bit more access. What else can we get out here? Get the carriage out. Let's see if there's any gears or cogs that are worth having. Again, very precise positioning. A stepper motor is a brushless DC motor which divides a full rotation into a series of steps. And the motor can be commanded to or driven to any position through a series of input pulses, which are normally a square wave. Sorry. Do, 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 do. This is why you need a driver to operate one. And again, you can get one that fits onto an Arduino for about 10 bucks on Amazon. From the Brazilian rainforest. Uh, a few more screws we'll want to remove. This printer, I think, was about $160 brand new, and the moment it needed new ink, $80. So, ooh, look at that. There she goes. Carriage like Ah! This does not look like a stepper motor. It looks like a regular old motor, which is, I'm finding, very surprising. And I would be remarkably surprised. Though, if it drives at a constant rate, yeah, yeah, I even, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aghast. It's paper handling. But we're going to put some volts through it and see if it is a stepper motor. If it is a stepper motor, ah, no, there's, a, there's another motor here, which is the paper carriage. And you can see a whole bunch of little cogs and doodads spinning around there. We'll have some of those out just for the fun of it. But first of all, let's let's see whether we are dealing in fact with a stepper motor. Normally you can tell a stepper motor because it has a detente feature, which is when you power it off, for some of them anyway, the permanent the permanent magnet variety, when there's no power and you rotate the shaft, you can feel a series of steps. Surprise, surprise. A nice tooth belt. No, I, I, I don't think that is. Well, we're going to find out. It's probably going to be running on... Ooh, four to six volts. And this wire is a little bit small for these wire cutters. Well, let's give it up. And again, as I mentioned before, when, when you're doing... Come here, come here. Here, when you're doing this, if you bend the wire over and trap it against the insulation, you often get a much more satisfying. I'm I'm shocked, shocked and appalled that this is running on a regular. Ooh, don't have those touching each other. A regular motor. Let me just uh, find some tape. I mean, it makes it a lot cheaper and, for our purposes, a lot more fun. Yeah, look at that. And a nice, I mean, we're getting up to the 30,000 RPM variety. Hear that? I'll put it by the mic. Nice little motor. Thank you, Hewlett Packard. There's one, and there's another one that looks to be identical. And I think the way they're working this is you see this strip here. I think there's an optical encoder right here. So it doesn't care whereabouts and how accurate the carriage is because it knows using this optical encoder and this has got a bunch of little strips I imagine or dots on the uh, piece of translucent tape and this optical encoder here decoder I guess actually 
um, tells this where it is and so it knows when to shoot out little spits, spits of ink. So it's got rid of the complication of knowing exactly where this is by driving it. It just drives backwards and forwards and when it's in the right place, it shoots. Very clever. Very clever way to save money, Mr. Hewlett and Mr. Packard, who I'm pretty sure have um, gone on to their just rewards. Maybe they've been recycled as a inkjet. Okay, so we're not going to get anything more out of that. Maybe a spring, a couple of... Well, we'll probably have that belt out because that is a sexy little belt. But I suspect it doesn't does not um, go all the way through because it doesn't need to. So why make things more complicated? Let's just pop that C, C circlip off. Oh dear. I think I may have broken it. Yeah, there's where it's clipped in place. a little unclipping and is it one belt or is it it is one belt it's one belt with a stopper on it so you can see right there if, you, if this thing will focus which it probably won't it's got a little lump on it giving you a, a, a zero point but it's a very 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 tight belt there is no stretch in that whatsoever. It is not like the turntable belt on a record player. Um, this is tight and it's got teeth. So get that back. Get it. And if we can rest this spring off you can get the steel shaft out so there's a nice little steel shaft solid steel probably very straight and again a bunch of little gears wiggly wire paper transport little sensors to tell you whether the uh, thing is in the right place all we need now is well actually maybe we're going to we're going to salvage the entire drive mechanism as one because, because why not? Let's give that a go. Because there is a gear and a belt here which may have been fairly useful. So this is um, stepping down. So we're going fast here and slow here. And we're probably going to need to remove a few of these screws. So talk amongst yourselves. One thing I didn't mention um, earlier is you can see these these two. One is uh, black, one is tricolored. Three different colors in here. You can see why well, you probably can't see because focus. Um, there are three strips in here, one for each color. But you say, why doesn't the ink dry up? Well, it does partly, which is kind of an annoying thing if you don't use these regularly. But attached to part of the paper mechanism is this. Let me get it over here. Um, you can see my fingers are a bit inky. It's a rubber seal um, and on a spring and it's a wiper. And this is the black one, this is the color one. Actually that's the other way around. That's the black one, that's the color one. And when these go to their home position, which is over here, they end up over them. Um, and wastes a little bit of ink. I think it fires a little bit of ink, keeps it wet, and it's sealed from the elements, from, from evaporation, in this rubber-lined box. And that's how they stop the ink, or at least in theory, how they stop the ink evaporating um, and clogging those tiny, 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 micro, nano-sized holes. Anywho, back to the uh, job in hand.
Okay, we're back. Now I've got the carriage, sorry, not the carriage, the paper handling part of this open. And we can see that it, it's a nice little action there. Doesn't have any bearings per se, just bushings at the other end. You'll notice, again, if you, if you can focus, it has a little optical encoder on here and a decoder that screws to here and this little bit goes over this plastic translucent plastic thing that has dots on it so it knows where the carriage ends are where it stops at either end as so many times it goes around actually no i'm lying it's, it knows how many how many rotations it's done because this is the paper feeder not the carriage driver pardon me so it'll know how far to go for a piece of a4 but that's quite a nice Little action. Useful.